Hello, my friends! It is the most wonderful time of year at the time of writing. And that only means one thing. A prediction video. Wait. It's not Christmas? January? Oh, come on! First prediction video and I already blew it! Well, uh, moving past that, 2022 was certainly an interesting year. And 2023 appears as if the big end won't stop. So come with me, my friends, as I try to predict what Nintendo will do next year. Also, quick note, I won't be talking too much about third-party games, because that is a completely different space, and honestly, like, with all the indies and stuff in the world, it's impossible to predict what will happen. January. To begin the year off strongly, we will receive word of a direct happening on the 13th. People instantly clamor about how this is our Zelda Direct, and that we are going to receive a bunch of Zelda content, including Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD, as well as our full reveal of Tears of the Kingdom. Switch Pro's rumors also start pumping about with so many people on Twitter going crazy about how we will have the best graphics ever, and a bunch of other features that realistically will never happen. The Direct begins with a black screen. We hear a familiar noise. That of Metroid. We see Samus running out of an exploding ship, Ridley on her tail. She jumps onto the gunship, flying away into space through asteroids. She flips her ship to a position behind Ridley, cut to inside the ship. Samus shoots a missile, direct hit. When her ship gets incoming missile warnings, a new, mysterious ship fires upon the gunship, crashing onto the planet below. Screen fades, leaving behind the logo, Metroid Prime 4, Renewal. December 2023. The Direct then has Miyamoto give our first Switch headline, starting with Just Dance. I mean, come on, they always show Just Dance right after something big happens in the Direct. Other big announcements include a brand new 2D Mario game. The game will be called New New Super Mario Bros, making the new Super Mario Bros series names more confusing. The game will be your standard 2D Mario game with no innovation at all in it. The game will be released on the 14th of April. We'll also get a trailer for Fire Emblem Engage, as well as Return to Dreamland Deluxe, just to remind people that those games exist. After this, Miyamoto will go up and say something along the lines of, We have something new to show you! He snaps, and we see a trailer for a new DKC game. Best of all, it's produced by Retro Studios. The game is called Donkey Kong The New Age, in which DK travels through locales he's visited in the past, while also being expanded into 3D open sandbox areas. The game will be set to release in September. We get our Tears of the Kingdom trailer, and I'm not even going to try to predict it. Only thing that I'm going to guess is that we're going to get an instrument, and it'll be called the Pan Flute of the Wild, because that'd be a neat thing. Our final game we get is an announcement for a Mario vs. Donkey Kong HD remaster set for TBD. Besides the Direct, the only notable thing that happens is Fire Emblem Engage releases and gets bombed with complaints and bugs. February. In February, we get our next N64 games, Mario Party 2 and 3. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe also releases, and it sells a million copies the first day, because it's Kirby, why wouldn't it sell? Game Freak also launches its Pokemon Presents for the month, announcing the deletion of Pokemon Masters EX, saying thank you to all the fans who have supported the game. We will then get the announcement of Detective Pikachu 2 plus Detective Pikachu Remake. The sequel looks amazing, going for the more adult Pokemon audience while still being marketable for kids. Also, for just some reason, Ryan Reynolds voices Pikachu in both games now, so... Cool. I guess. I mean, it's Ryan Reynolds, so I'm not complaining, but... You know. The game releases in September. MARCH! An indie world happens, and it's pretty good. Nintendo also releases a free patch for Fire Emblem Engage that fixes the game to the nth degree. April. Only four notable things happen in the month of April, starting with the release of new new Super Mario Bros. The game sells 50 million copies, surprising no one. It also reviews fine, no one is shocked at any features, as it's just another 2D Mario game. Healing our second thing, a Twitter argument. People argue about whether something with the tagline of new should be the same old thing. While the other group violently attacks back saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. While the Switzerlands and the fans desperately try to calm down the war, saying both are right in certain aspects, but their attempts only fuel the flame more. The Mario movie then releases in the US, and many consider it to be the best Illumination movie made yet. They even somehow get Chris Pratt to redo a bunch of lines, and he sounds much better because of it. The movie does really well, and the future of Nintendo cinema looks bright. The other thing that happens this month is that Nintendo releases a little calendar reminding people of what is to release this year. 
but King 9 fans notice that Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is absent. Many ask Nintendo if the game has been scrapped, and Nintendo goes silent. Insiders and employees say that the game was indeed silently scrapped, causing another Twitter war to go on alongside the Mario one. May. The Twitter wars continue with no sign of stopping until the 11th of May. They make peace, agreeing to argue about this another day, as it's finally time. On the 12th of May, people finally play the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The game reviews amazingly, everyone is super happy, and I try not to die from anxiety at school that day, especially because that's probably a start test day, so that, that'll be fun. June. Rumors kick up, everyone is losing their dang minds due to not getting a real E3 Direct last year, and being overhyped that we're finally getting one again. We finally reach Direct Day, and it opens with a cinematic for Tears of the Kingdom DLC, which just like Breath of the Wild features two DLC packs. Now, I'm not going to predict what these packs include, as the game hasn't been released, and at least at the time of this recording, Nintendo hasn't, like, said anything since the September Direct. Pushing past that, the DLC is set for November. We also finally get the announcement of a collection including Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD. These games look beautiful on Switch and will release on August 25th. We then get our Pikmin 4 reveal. The game will be about Captain Olimar retiring and needing to train his successor, his son. We crash land on PNF 404 with Louie. One mechanic from each game returns. You'll swarm like in the first game. Caves and captain swap from the second and fruit from the third. The game does not let you have four captains, you can only have three. But you will have six captains to pick from. Olimar, Louie, Olimar's son, who I'm dubbing Josh, Brittany, Al, and Captain Charlie. You can swap them from the ship just like you would with an onion, and each captain has an ability that only they have. For example, Captain Charlie could have a passive ability that makes the team move 50% faster, or something along those lines. Pikmin 4 is set to release September 22nd. Detective Pikachu 2 plus Detective Pikachu HD is also set to release on September 22nd, and Mario vs. Donkey Kong HD Shadow Drops today. Final big reveal is that a remake of Oracle of Ages and Seasons set for 2024. With that, E3 comes to a close, and nobody really cares about the Detective Pikachu game except for me, because I've been waiting for years. July! It's another indie world. That's all there really needs to be said. August. This is the month, exactly two years after the Switch OLED announcement, we get the Switch Pro announcement. The system launches the same day as Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. It features a 1080p handheld OLED screen, two cartridge readers, 60 frames on every game, and a pro dock with fans that let the system overclock to 4K visuals. Every first party game released by Nintendo then receives a patch to update the visuals to match the system. The system has a $400 price tag. The Zelda remakes release this month as well, and nobody has a Switch Pro because everyone scalped them and they're charging way too much for it. September! People wonder what is happening with the base model due to the Switch Pro, but we won't have to wonder for much longer. Nintendo announces they will support the Switch with most of their games for two years, then the Switch Pro will become the primary console. Nintendo then launches their last Direct for the year, giving a full reveal of Metroid Prime Renewal, as well as the Oracle Games remake. The game uses a hand-drawn style similar to the It'll Do games, and people find this style great. The game is set for a spring release. Nintendo then says that they are done adding systems to Switch Online, but they instead have a new feature they're going to be adding. Yep, they now have a streaming service in which you can watch the Mario movie on Switch Online. Very fortunately though, this just comes with the expansion pack and they aren't charging extra for it. People wonder what this means for the future of Nintendo Media, and the rest of the Direct shows it. The Direct continues with The Legend of Zelda Tales of the Wild. This will be a TV series that features main characters from Breath of the Wild following certain side stories. The only idea I have right now is Impa's Servant's strange crush on Link. The animation looks great, the voice acting is... it's fine. With Tom Holland playing Link, it will get 8 episodes all on Switch Online set to stream in early February 2024. They only reveal one other thing, Super Mario Odysseus. Yep. Shocking everyone, they give us Super Mario DLC of all the Mario things they could have done. But to their credit, it looks great and involves Mario traveling to famous Nintendo locales such as Yoshi's Island and Woohoo Island and even other Nintendo locations that don't have island in them. Then Miyamoto comes up and says, we got you, we tricked you, you thought the next Mario game would come. 
Then he snaps his fingers, and we see the logo for Super Mario Galaxy 3. Then the direct ends with the entire internet hanging their mouths open wondering what those last five minutes of the direct were. Detective Pikachu 2 plus Detective Pikachu HD then releases, but nobody cares! Has Pikmin 4 then releases? Even me, one of Detective Pikachu's biggest advocates, doesn't care because Pikmin. The game sets up a new era of Pikmin and sells surprisingly well, reaching 1.5 million units by the end of September. The future of Pikmin never looked brighter. October! This month is quiet except for the release of Super Mario Odysseus, which reviews quite well and many are surprised about how well the concept was done, managing to avoid the feeling of being a nostalgia train. November! get a random Pokemon Presents, which only reveals one thing, Scarlet and Violet DLC, called Legends of the Past, is basically Legends Arceus AGAIN, which I'm not complaining. You travel to ancient Paldea, which has a Rome sort of style happening. They have an emperor who commands you to find the strongest Pokemon ever created. The reason for this being a war is happening. For the first time in the series, we get a feel for how Pokemon were used in conflicts. Flashing the world out further, Legends of the Past is set to release in December. We'll also get the Tears of the Kingdom DLC, which is really neat. December. We get the Pokemon DLC, but nobody cares about that because METRIC PRIME 4! After six years, the game releases, and it looks amazing. Everyone loves it, and Nintendo realizes that it is indeed a viable franchise once again, bringing hope for the fans of Golden Sun, F-Zero, and Kid Icarus, hoping that maybe, just someday, their series might return. Those are all my predictions for 2023, all of which will 100% happen. Definitely. Well, thanks for watching, and what are your predictions and hopes for 2023? Let me know down in the comments. Have a great 2023, and I'll see you next time.